All right, let's talk through it a little bit. I'm hearing a lot of numbers. You're doing some calculations. Anybody decide which one was better? What do you, which one was better? You want Fres by what measure? You get more bang for your buck. Bang for your buck, so, okay. Well, we'll go through the process here kind of real tediously today. And then after today, we're kind of just going to focus on the numbers, but we kind of want to go what's in, into our decision process. By the way, pizza... So, okay, so first of all, what is the objective or goal? What did you identify? Anybody? Nathan, your group have, Corey, your group have a goal or a... So, the problem is that there are three hundred hungry missionary students that require cheap nourishment. Okay. To nourishment. Anyone else have different goals? So, nourishment. Satisfy hunger. Is that the same? No. Yeah, maybe not the same thing. <laughs> Maybe a different goal. What is your, anyone have a different goal? Sarah? Um, ours is to determine the best option for pizza. Best option for pizza, okay. You had one? Determine which pizza option is cheapest cost per volume of pizza. Okay. Cost per volume. Is that your objective or is that your measure? For your, for your objective. How about this? Best grade on exam. So Liam here says, says I, I do not eat and drink. I fuel and hydrate. It's about performance. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it tastes. It's what what macronutrients do I need when to fuel my performance for the best performance? Right? So, is it uh, fueling or is it eating for pleasure? So, satisfy hunger, nourishment. The, uh, back when I was a kid, Astronauts were the, the big thing, right? And so you could buy, we had them sometimes, food sticks. That's what it, it's what it sounds like. The little packages and there was a stick of food. And it was awesome because that's what the astronauts ate. That and tang. Get some food sticks and tang, you're an astronaut. And back then they were saying, you know, it's going to come to a point where you won't need to eat. You'll just need to take a pill and get all the nourishment you need. Well, turns out people actually like to eat. So the food pill never quite took off. But th those are different things. So some p might have different objectives or goals. The best eating experience. If you go to an expensive restaurant, you're not going there because it has the, for, to fuel your performance or to nourish you and probably not the lowest cost per volume. You're looking for the best eating experience. So these are different ones. 
The uh, you guys are in, how many are civil engineers? How many thought of being an architect when you're considering careers and stuff? What's the difference between an engineer and an architect? A civil engineer and architect. So the 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 architect is there's a lot of overlap, but they're trying to accomplish the the purpose, but they're also thinking maybe a little artistically or something. Not that engineers don't, but the whole thing is architects decide what they want to have and the engineers make sure it doesn't fall down. So those are different objectives, different things you're going at. And we're getting to the we're gonna end up probably with something the cost for volume, but do all engineers have the drive the same kind of car? The answer is no, right? But the uh, so even engineers will have different objectives, different goals, different criteria they use to make that decision of what kind of car they drive. So we need to understand and identify our goals. Now apparently we've already decided, well I guess that's the next point is the alternatives. The, uh, we've already decided that it's pizza that we're going to get. Maybe we should go back and revisit that, whether it's pizza. But, or maybe at this point we're decide, we're, we've already passed that. Our analysis is, gonna, is just on the best kind of pizza. So we also want to think whether uh, we want to go back one step. You probably talked about that in Intro to Engineering and stuff like that, the design process, right? That's one famous one I remember from when I took Intro to Engineering a few years ago. And they, uh, it was this engineering company was tasked with coming up with a better tomato picking machine or tomato processing machine or something that didn't bruise the tomatoes. And what they came up with was a, a uh, a firmer type of tomato. So instead of making the machine, they said, let's go back. The problem is the, the tomatoes are getting bruised. What can we do to solve that problem? Not just jump to making a machine. So well, we probably jumped, most of us, to, okay, what's the cost per volume? Or pizza per dollar? When I was a, when my two older kids were little, we were redoing our kitchen, and uh, I would take them out. My wife would stay home and have her tuna and carrots or whatever she had, and then I'd take them to uh, Cece's Pizza. And my daughter, Catherine, I think she was f five then, and uh, she was like, is, is this healthy, Dad? I'm like, yeah, it's the healthy kids' pizza place. Okay, that's good. But I think she was five and Stephen was three and ate like an 18 year old. But the, uh, we go to Cece's Pizza, all you can eat pizza, the three of us, I think Stephen was free and Catherine was $1.99, I think. And this, tax included, the three of us, all you can eat pizza, $5.40. I mean, calories per dollar. You're not doing any better than that. So if your goal is to get the most calories per dollar or the most volume of pizza per dollar, there are alternatives for that. Okay, let's, let's move on to alternatives. So our alternatives are identified in the problem. It's pickup sticks, right? is the one, one, and the other is what, Fred's. So, we are, alternatives are F or Pus. Wait, that doesn't sound too good. Yeah. Any other alternatives? Yep. Don't eat pizza. So that actually probably should, uh, most of our analyses, that should be an alternative. Nothing. And uh, matter of fact, in the, when I was in the EPA, the Superfund program, 
worked for EPA, but also in grad school I worked on EPA projects. For the Superfund program, you're always required one of your alternatives was the do nothing alternative. So that all that had to be evaluated alongside that. They sense now they don't now they don't say do nothing. It's remediation by natural attenuation. But, which actually is not doing nothing. You have to do lots of monitoring and stuff like that. So next month, for some of you, we'll learn more about that. So we always in most cases, we must analyze the do-nothing alternative, and it's generally not no cost. So I mentioned some of these methods. We do the, the cost-benefit method. Our first analysis is what uh, these alternatives, we do a stepwise, looking at the different alternatives, and our first one is, is this one better than doing nothing? So doing nothing should be in our, our alternatives. Now in this case, sometimes some decisions are already made for us. The, uh, like I said, we uh, should re revisit that We've already made the decision we're doing pizza. Should we revisit that? Should we pivot to something else? That's a term they use in the, in the what's the management technique? Anybody? What is the, what's the, the buzzword we use? We didn't, we've backed off in the, in the collaboratory leadership stuff. We've backed off actually using the language of the, agile, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's one of the terms from agile management. I went, a couple of years ago, I went to this meeting of the uh, uh, U.S. Agency for International Development. They, they funded a bunch of these tiny little $100,000 projects, tr trying different things. They kept saying how tiny these projects were. And they, uh, and actually they brought in like a couple Silicon Valley people to run this program, to run it like a venture capitalism stuff. And this venture capitalism guy says, I've funded I forget the number, 123 different projects and not one of them has delivered what they said they would. His point was being that st stuff always comes up. There's always pivots, there are always changes. And either that or he was really bad at picking what projects to. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, so we have our alternatives. Pickup sticks versus Fred's. In most cases, we should also uh, uh, analyze that, each of those versus nothing. The, uh, what's the next one on our list? Got this little doot doot doot. Focus on the differences. So, I'm going to go back to the paper here. Go back to the paper here. What are the differences between the uh, alternatives? Well, first of all, food type. This one, we've already decided that they're both pizza. So, again, assuming we're not going to revisit that decision, we don't need to analyze the pizza-ness of the pizza. They're both pizza, okay? The, uh, so that doesn't need to be in our analysis. Taste, quality, what are some other differences? I heard uh, you guys were saying or somewhat, oh, somebody was saying, you were saying something about the kind of pizza you like? Oh, yeah, because I like square pizza. Square pizza, that's right, okay. So, the taste and quality, the shape of it. I like square pizza. Square pizza is wrong. I am not eating square pizza.
What else? What other differences are there? Delivery time. What else? Initial price. Price. Well, we do price per per volume or volume per price. Well, is that what are the uh, where's my where's my uh, Okay, the, the uh, pus, pickup sticks, that's the square one. $15 plus 5% sales tax, $1.50 delivery. How much is that total? $17.25. And then the other one is $17.25 plus 5% sales tax, which is 18 something, right? So. You're jumping right to the price per uh, per amount that you get or amount per price, but what if you only have eighteen dollars and that's it? So that might come in, or what if you uh, you're instructed to spend twenty dollars, so you're going to give the rest as a tip. So the price is going to be the same either way. So the, the price is, uh, in addition, is a little, it's not the exact same thing as the, the price per volume. And, the, and it might come in, and actually that happens in, uh, especially in public works and in government, that you have uh, limits to how much you can spend, or the other way, you have to spend at least this much, or if it's this much, it's in this category. If it's under that, it's a different category. So that, when I worked for EPA, there was like, uh, there was like, you know, on Wednesday, help, we need to spend $50,000 by Friday, or we get $50,000 less next year. If anybody have anything they need to buy? So there are some weird things that come up like that. All right, what else, uh, what are the differences? We had delivery time, price, uh, someone, what else? I heard some other ones over there. I heard someone, I think, said experience. Are you familiar with what they do? Friends or employees. I was actually in on one time with the engineering firm, in on a proposal for a, a water treatment plant, and I was, I was, uh, so we went and made our presentation to the the board of the entity that that decides who's going to get the contract, and uh, we're about to walk in, and the previous group comes out and one of the guys in our in our firm says oh that guy is Jake the the guy's the head of the board that's deciding Let's see if I can get it. that's Jake's best friend and fishing buddy and we're like yep we got no shot so and we didn't but the uh, so I mean that's not always a terrible thing. If you have experience with a place, if you have friends there, you know the employees, you, uh, you're maybe more assured that, that they'll do what you're hoping they'll do. So that's not always a bad thing. The most of you looked at cost per unit or unit per cost. Is that the value? That's U, not valve. Coupon. Do you have a coupon to get five dollars? Well, that goes into the price. Yeah, maybe. Depends how you look at it. 
So, well, this coupon, I like this place better, but I have this coupon that expires this week. Let's go to this place. You might be a frequent customer of that place. What about You know, this place uses locally sourced organic materials. Oh, uh, this place, I heard that the owner of that place gives money to this, this cause that I don't like. I heard they give money to this cause that I do like. They support, so that goes into the decision making process. Those are differences between those. So those are all valid things to consider beyond just the cost per unit. So a lot of you jump right to the cost per unit, but uh, there are other things to look at. Okay, let's go back to focus on the differences. Use a consistent viewpoint. Let's go back to this button that's like stuck in there. There we go. I have to get a little screwdriver and see if I can fix that. So we use a consistent viewpoint in evaluating our alternative. I mentioned before that uh, we're the we're we're the customer, we have a different viewpoint on our analysis of pizza than the pizza place owner does. In engineering decisions, we might want to ask who is the decision maker? Are we looking at the alternative as our, the owner of our firm would look at it? Are we looking at it as us being a representative of the public. So uh, the viewpoint might affect our analysis. What do we do in what do we do in wastewater? What's our objective? Biological wastewater treatment? Keep bug happy. So the question here is who some of you are like, what? Do you So who do I make happy? Again, the analysis is, can be different depending on whose viewpoint we use. The, uh, if we, for example, a number of you raise your hands, you're civil engineers. I would bet money most of you are at some point are going to have to participate in a public meeting for an engineering project that's going to take somebody's land or disturb what they do. So in my analysis, am I a representative of the public? Do I look at the needs of the, the motorists? Do I look at the, the needs of the or viewpoint of the state government? Do I look at the needs in, of the local people? So who do I make happy here? Do I make the most people happy? Or the most important people happy? The, uh, the, in Northwest Arkansas, where I lived before, they put in a new airport. It was like almost 20 years ago now. And they put it in a certain spot. And I heard later, well, they were going to put it here, but then uh, Mrs. Tyson said no. So the, the big employer in the region is Tyson Foods. And apparently Mrs. Tyson had the authority to, to say, no, you're not going to put the airport there. You can put it here. So who is the decision maker and who do we make happy? 
Uh, my dog is going to get the leftovers, and he he hates Fred's pizza. All right, we got. Uh, it says you and two friends, and one of them is a vegan. Oh, yay. <laughs> We're going to get this vegan cheese. Okay. Special, well, I, that sounds bad. Special people, but I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Diet. Yeah, we had the. Uh, when I worked for EPA, we had a field site out at Hill Air Force Base in Utah, and we're just stuck out there in a couple trailers working out there. And one of the guys was uh, was uh, he was gluten intolerant. I will not tell her. Lactose intolerant, right? Not, not gluten, lactose. He was uh, like real bad, not less like, you know, I don't feel quite right. He was like, yeah, he gets really sick of stuff. So we'd get pizza with no cheese on it. But. All right, back to Consistent viewpoint, common unit of measure. What's our unit of measure? I'm losing that button. What's our unit of measure? Okay. I'm going to say dollar. In this case, so that's our unit we're using. In this case, you're right, we're going to probably want to look at cubic inches per dollar or square inches per dollar or something like that. But, so in this class, this is going to be our unit of measure for everything. We're going to put everything in dollars. Every, we can put everything into dollars. We are going to do a little bit with foreign exchange and look at well, if we have the projects in this country and this money and stuff, but we're going to all... We always bring that back to, okay, what does that mean in dollars? We're going to talk about public works projects. And, you know, if we do this, there will be, we're going to put in this recreational trail. And we estimate that uh, 300,000 people a year will use this recreational trail. That's a benefit. Well, there, are they going to pay for it? You, no. But we can put dollar amounts on that as a benefit. So everything gets, goes to a dollar, even kind of non-monetary things. We're going to try, for our analysis, we got to try to put, uh, put it into dollars. So all non-monetary things but put it, get put into dollars. And remember, when you talk about the time value of money. Time has a, a monetary cost to it. All right, very quickly, let's finish up here. A couple more. The uh, criteria, relevant criteria. This is going to go in, uh, this will be a lot of repeat of the differences. So that we have these differences, and then we want to come up with the criteria we use to evaluate what we're going to use. So money is a criteria. What else? Criteria we want. How about a minimum or maximum delivery time? You say minimum? There's not a minimum delivery time. I worked as a teenager. I worked at a couple of restaurants as a dishwasher, never made it up to busboy, but one day I shall be. The, uh, 
and people would, they're nice restaurants, sit down restaurants, people would complain if they got their food too fast. Because they were just trying to push us out of here. So, our pizza we probably want, if one is going to take three hours to deliver it and the other one can deliver it 30 minutes, that's probably an important criterion for us. Shape. I like square pizza. Experience with it. Now that might also be put under the uncertainty, our next step. We might have a maximum, oh that's too big, I don't want that. That's too much pizza, said no one ever. But, the, uh, but maybe somebody does it. That's too much. I don't want to waste that. I don't want to deal with that. So that might be one. I don't want to store it. We've been buying last six months or so, we've been buying uh, meat from these like local farms where they have, uh, you know, uh, free range chickens and grass fed beef and, and happy hogs eating acorns and converting in the forest and stuff. And, and the, uh, but we don't have much freezer space. So we would buy more at a time for, for cheaper, but we can't store it all. So we might have a maximum size. Again, again, this is a lot of repeat from that. Social or political, that might be a criterion. Is it hip or cool? Well, you know what? Walmart has these giant pizzas for $4 that you bake yourself and they're really good. Walmart. I am not getting a pizza from Walmart, I tell you that. But. And again, taste, ingredients. What were the different ingredients? The differences in ingredients between the pizzas. What was it? Uh, okay, so one is one and a quarter inch thick. The other one's one and three quarter inch thick, so it's a little different, thicker. I like thicker pizza. I like Chicago style. I like New York style. I like CC's. I haven't been to CC's for years. It was. We took our twins there one time. I took the the older kids and their twins, who were little toddlers at the time, and they were. They were crawling over the top of the seats onto other people's tables, and they were like, "Like, we're done. Grab them, get out there." It was like, that was the last time I was at CC's. But they will probably behave themselves now that they're 18. But yeah, it's not very good, but it's real cheap. So, okay, what else? Uh, oh. Vendor. So here at Messiah, we have for, if I want to buy uh, paper products, I have to use a certain vendor. If I want to buy paper clips, I have to use a certain vendor. We have approved vendors that we are required to use. So that happens quite a bit. And I did a, a project, <coughs> a little project for, uh, got funding from uh, from the government and National Science Foundation and and uh, for go to Sri Lanka and they required that you use an American airliner to uh, do your trip so that was required criterion okay so we're about done here let's look at our other Criteria
uncertainty explicit. So that is in the Superfund program. You actually do a quantitative. You guys did, uh, how many of you have taken? Uh, now, some of you took experimental methods, right? And some of you took statistics? Or were you all experimental methods? So did you do like sensitivity analysis and stuff in there? So you looked at, you analyze the uncertainty. So you want to do that. I was going to say in the Superfund program, there's a way they do to explicitly evaluate uncertainty. In this case, we might say, well, you know, going back to the experience, I know this, I know Fred's, they deliver on time, they're good. I'm not really sure about pickup sticks. My friend did it one time and it took him three hours to deliver it and the pizza was stuck to the top of the box. But then this other friend did it and it was delivered in 20 minutes and they said it was the greatest pizza ever. So those are the uncertainty of it. I actually, I, I drink, I have this bad habit of drinking uh, Diet Coke. Actually, years ago, I kind of switched from Diet Pepsi to Diet Coke because a couple times I got a Diet Pepsi that was just nasty. I don't know what happened to it. it tastes like battery acid. Uh, not that I've had battery acid, but I get the... Uh, <laughs> And so I actually liked Diet Pepsi a little better, but I switched to Diet Coke because of the uncertainty. All right, so finally, let's, let's do our number here. We're finally going to make our decision and kind of in between making certainty explicit and revisit your decision is the decision. So who's got a, who's got a decision? What did you, you decide? Someone said... Michaela, you said which one was Fred's? And that was based on more bang for your buck. What's, what's bang? Volume? Yeah. Okay. Did everyone else, anyone else have a different decision? What, yeah? If you just want the cheapest option, Yeah. So that, the price might be the thing, the cheapest option. What about, uh, area instead of volume. So if you like thinner pizza, you just want the bigger area, the wider cheese on it, maybe more crust. So depending on it, I think when you see those numbers in there, you're given a size, you're given a thickness, you're given a price, you automatically think, yeah, volume per price or price per volume is that. And then finally, the uh, Yeah, so the total cost could have been it. You might have budget restrictions. Why? The, uh, I think one of our professional development things in the fall, they, they talked about this a little bit. Why might you not want to, I think they were talking about estimating budgets and estimating costs. And I had never, th I hadn't ever thought of this why might you not want to have a project come in under budget? I don't know. About, I'm fishing for something that I wouldn't have thought of unless I heard them. So sometimes the client says, okay, we want this building, and you put a proposal or bid in on it, and you say, I can build it for, and they say, we have $10 million dollars to do and you say I can build this building for 10 million dollars and they choose you and then you build it for 8 million and you give them back 2 million and you're like yay us we saved them 2 million aren't we great and they're like oh wait a minute we had 10 million to build this building and you built it for eight million. If we would have known that, we could have built a bigger building. You know, we didn't. We got something less than we could have. So it's not, it's not always. In in some cases, it's not always best to come under budget. We might want to make the use of all that money. Anyway, okay. Revisit your decisions. So actually, so you, uh, 
And you do this probably every meal. Afterwards, you're like, you're like, was that good? Was that the right decision? Was that the right pizza? Did I eat too much? Actually, I didn't like that. So in all cases, we should go back and uh, revisit the decision. All right, let's take, we went through real tediously through that. For most of the stuff we're going to do in this class, we're going to, we are going to jump right to the numbers. But this was just to point out that these, this is part of the process, and the number is a way to help you make a decision. All right, let's take like a 10-minute break or so, and we'll come back. Everybody stand up and wake up.